Um, response to last week's who wants hot, uh, oh, to the girl who wants a hot boyfriend. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Billy Nutsack Brains. You had a lady listener write in about being a six or something around that and wanting to be with a guy that's a 10. Being a lady listener and rate my looks as a four. Hey, welcome to my world. While my younger, hotter husband is a nine, I felt the need to write in. Girl, it's no different for us as it is for men who date hotter partners. It's easier. It's either you are a sugar mama or got confidence through the roof. Guys are not going to run after you like they do the nines or tens. But if you play the long game like the funny, ugly guys do, you will bag a 10. Uh, What do I mean by this? Don't act so thirsty for attention when you are out with your much hotter looking girlfriends. Be the comic relief and not in a self-deprecating way. Do it in a I'm smarter and wiser than everyone. Look at this. Yeah, like I'd make a great mother. These whores will fucking blow you in the parking lot. That's all they're good for. Why are they whores? Because they're better looking? Because you're jealous, Bill? Okay, maybe. Guys are just as attracted to confidence as women are. It just doesn't happen right away because they are slow and take a while to see it. You know, just when I thought you were going to compliment men. Um, no, it's because we're, we're fucking visually, we're, we're wired that way. All right. And uh, yeah, we get taken to the cleaners because of that. Lastly, get your own damn interests and focus on you. As women, we get told all kinds of fucked up shit like you'll never get a husband acting like that. Exactly. Or this will make men like you like you if you stay skinny or dress this way or whatever. Fuck everyone and do you and you will get your 10. Right there, exactly. This is what I'm waiting for every fucking feminist out there to do, to stop fucking blaming guys. Like that's all empowering shit. That's like, I. That's what you just said for women out there is what I fucking tell young comics. Stop trying to write your fucking act so the industry notices you. Go out and do what the fuck you want to do. Go find your audience and let these cunts come to you. This is, I'm reading this shit. You're talking to women and I'm feeling uplifting. I'm going to go smoke a cigar. No. If all that fails, make a shit ton of money and men will want to be your trophy husband. <laughs> hey, you don't want that. Go fuck yourself, chub, chubby girl with a hot younger husband. Well, there you go. All right. Oh, Jesus. Speaking of cigar smoking. Cigar smoking to pipe smoking. I got to go back to what this woman just wrote. I'm telling you. All right. Men and women can learn a lot from what she just said there. That is the secret to success. All right. Stop fucking thinking about what other... You go out and do what the fuck you want to do. You're not hurting anybody. Do what the fuck you want to do. Believe in yourself. All right. Stop walking around trying to find another fucking parent. You know, looking for everybody's goddamn approval. Just fucking relax, figure it out, baby steps each day, and next thing you know, you're up the fucking mountain. All right, cigar smoking to pipe smoking. Dear B for Vendetta. I don't know what that means. I'm a new listener. I know V for Vendetta. I am listening. I'm a new listener within the last two years. I am a South Jersey guy. Hey, how the fuck you doing? And most of my knowledge of you was your 2006 reprimand of the local Philly crowd. Was that that long ago? 15 years ago. I've really come to enjoy your podcast. (laughs) Yeah, it'll grow on you if you keep listening. Um, I have a five-year-old son, and being an older parent can relate to a lot of the same things. I lean conservative, but I appreciate rational thought rather than party politics, myself included. Something that Americans seem to have moved away from lately. I tend to lean left, but like, yeah, if something makes sense to me, I don't give a shit what color the tie is that's telling it to me. So, um, what is he says? I'm an occasional cigar smoker, but really love briar pipes and tobacco. Aside from looking like an old man, it's a great way to sit back and relax and force yourself to slow down. Yeah, I know. Then you have a never-ending cold. Uh, I'm not sure if you're ever 
if you ever considered pipe smoking, I tried it. I can't keep it going. There's an art to it that I couldn't figure out. And then I was like, do I really want to figure this out? Um, Because both my grandfathers uh, smoked pipes. And uh, it was funny. They would just bust that thing out. You know, we'd be walking around Faneuil Hall when they were in town. My grandmother would go in, you know, with my mom or something to go look at clothes or something. And he would just stand outside, you know, find a bench, just pop a little tobacco in. He would just sit there huffing on it. It was great. It smelled amazing, too. <clears throat> there are hundreds of tobacco blends, both aromatic and non. Uh, lots of taste to explore. Collecting the different styles of pipes is a lot of fun as well. But again, socially, society ranks tobacco smoking just below apartheid in terms of offensiveness. All the best to you. Yeah, I, um, yeah, it looks cool as hell to me and shit like that, but like, I just have to stop. I'm not going to throw my cigars out. I'm just going to bring them down to the comedy store and get a bunch of other people hooked on them. That's a stupid thing. I should just throw them out. I don't know, but I'm getting rid of them. That's it. I'm done. Done. Fuck you. See you later. All right. Hitler's Pope in Saratoga. <coughs> Dear Billy the Brick, longtime listener, first time writing in, was at the Garden Show, the real one, uh, plus MGM in D.C. Um, I don't know what the real one means. Uh, the TD Bank North Garden? I mean, that's, I mean, the Boston Garden was the real garden. That's where the most championships were won. All right? Don't get it fucking confused. There was 21 championships won there, 16 NBA titles, and five Stanley Cups. Okay, I don't know what happened in, in your garden. If you're, if you're trying to talk sports, you know, or you're trying to talk about respect, it's just like, it's just location. It's in Manhattan and everybody wants to fucking live there. I guess that that's what it is because it's certainly not because of the success of those two sorry ass franchises. that. Are, okay, Bill. going to the show in Saratoga Springs this August. Couldn't believe it when I saw that place on your tour. Yes, sir. <clears throat> If you've never been, it's a beautiful place, a true oasis for Deegan, horse racing fans like me, D-E-G-E-N. I don't know what that means. Uh, you Wait, well, let's look it up. Let's see if that's a, a, a spelling error. Or if that's, okay, Deegan, horse racing. That's not coming up at all. Inside nature's giants, racehorses. I see just a big rack of ribs. What's that, a fucking glue factory? All right, I don't know what you were trying to say there. Um, you're going at the peak of racing season too. Fun town with a bunch of bars and history. And if you have time to go to the races, it's a great experience filled with beautiful ladies, beautiful women. It's uh, the one horse track where you don't feel like a complete degenerate, but rather a high-class gent transported back into the roaring 20s. Well, what about... Uh, Churchill Downs, that's how I felt when I went there. Um, a lot of, you know, when you go to horse racing, I just felt like when you went to the Kentucky Derby, there was a lot of people like dressing the part of a degenerate gambler. <laughs> then there was actual, like I probably think like the Kentucky Derby is like St. Patrick's Day for alcoholics. Like, man, I'm just going to stay home and drink. I ain't going down there with all those fucking yahoos. You know, they don't know how to spend their college, their kids' college education. They're doing it ironically. Um, I recommend Old Brian's Inn for a meal. Cool little stone tavern with great food. Building is from 1773. And the rumor is that George Washington himself and Alex Hamilton. Oh, you're in a f sort of fucking um, familiar relationship with this guy you mean alexander hamilton stayed there while surveying battlefields that's just a rumor that means they didn't stay there uh really right writing in though to discuss hitler's pope eugenio Pacelli, pius the 12th and the vatican position during world war ii as you were talking about it on the 1018 podcast oh yeah they kind of were uh I don't know. I think they were, they kind of were in the middle <clears throat> and sort of probably rooting for the Germans 
because they were going to try to put a religion out of business. And that's the business they were in, right? Super interesting topic. And one that I actually wrote a massive paper on way back in college that I got an A for. Yeah, yeah, look at me, a history major in college. Why? I don't really know, but it was fun at the time, especially being high during lectures. Um, Anyway, my stance ended up being that he actually did all he could to help the Jewish people and just treaded carefully around the Nazis. I mean, imagine being smack dab in the middle of Italy, not only surrounded by crazy Mussolini, but you've got a front row seat to watch the Nazis steamroll through the continental through continental Europe in months with dive bombing planes, monster tanks, and methed out superhuman soldiers. Yeah, I mean, people choose their own survival. Yeah. He did a lot for the Jewish people. Look at this. Included secretly sheltering Jews in various churches, libraries, and monasteries held by the Catholic Church. Well, then why didn't they give the gold back? Why did Jewish people have to knock on the door and be like, I believe you got something that belongs to us? Uh, Well, approximately 80% of the Jews in Europe perished. 80%? Oh, my God. During World War II, 85% of Italians, 40,000 Jews were saved. It's reported no fewer than 3,000 Jews were hidden away at Castel Gandolfo, the Pope's summer residence. Uh, Well, all right. Look at that. That's that's a good thing for my religion. Who knew? Didn't want to send the whole paper as an attachment, but here was my closing paragraph from it that illustrates my position. Well, where did you get this information? Is this from the Vatican trying to rewrite their history, or is this true? I have no idea. But you're the history major. We'll see. Overall, well, the argument can be made that Pius XII, in calling him Hitler's Pope, There is simply too much evidence that suggests otherwise. Well, then how the fuck did he get that fucking nickname? The Reich Konkordat he made with Hitler was done to protect the Catholic Church and prevent the violence that Hitler would have taken out against German Roman Catholics had Pius XII condemned Nazi Germany. Uh, And Gino Pacelli never spoke out in defense of the Jews during the Holocaust because he knew it would only lead to more innocent deaths. He also, yes, yeah, it's like fucking cancel culture. Really, Bill? You're really going to get, oh, sorry. He also never needed the publicity to defend the Jews because, he never needed publicly, sorry, to defend the Jews because he was secretly protecting them the whole time under Hitler's nose. Perhaps the best way to defend Pius XII's action during the Third Reich is found in a speech made by Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, a Jew, ironically ended the war that Hitler started with his creation of the nuclear bomb. Only the Catholic Church stood squarely across the path of Hitler's campaign for suppressing the truth. I never had any special interest in the church before, but now I feel great affection and admiration because the church alone has had the courage and, pers- and persistence to stand for intellectual truth and moral freedom. I am forced thus to confess that what I once despise, I now praise unservedly. Well, he also didn't know that they were raping kids either. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of angles to this. <clears throat> if one of the more brilliant men uh, in human history, not to mention a man of Jewish faith, said about said about the Catholic Church, uh, led by Pius the Twelfth, then how could anyone argue otherwise? Oh, they can't believe me. I have follow up emails coming in. I bet. Uh, and Gino Pacelli or or Pius the Twelfth was not Hitler's pope or an anti-Semite, but a man who came into power during the darkest days in human history and navigated through Hitler's Nazi regime with prudence, morality, and genuine concern for the Jewish race. Well, I hope all of that's true. Um, Keep up the great work on all fronts. Your podcast is a great way to end the workday twice a week, and I find many of your takes insightful, layered, and most important, helpful. Look at that. Would you look at that? I do matter. I am doing nice things. (laughs) I fucking picked four fucking games last week against the spread. And once again, I'm 3-0 going into the final fucking game. The goddamn 49ers. Fuck me. Just fuck me. I I don't know what the deal was. I don't know what those fucking corners were doing in the first half getting all confused on a little fucking uh, little razzle-dazzle behind the line. Um, How to ask out a bank teller. 
Dear Billy Balding Balls. <laughs> Come on, guys. Can't you be a little nicer to me, man? It's, it's the holiday. It's the holiday season. A doobie doobie do. <clears throat> uh, first, I'd like to say that I recently discovered your podcast a few months ago and have been tuning in every, every week. Dude, this is what the guy writes. First of all, I'm going to read exactly what he wrote. First, I'd like to say that I recently discovered your podcast a few months ago and have tuning every week since then. I enjoy listening to you rant when I'm at work. I don't feel like I'm ranting. Dude, ranting is short for ranting and raving. I mean, I got a little fucking upset about global warming, whiplash weather, climate change, but I mean, you know, I swear to God, you, are you, I don't know, maybe that's why I'm so fucked up, because your guys' idea of yelling is me just, you know, making a point. Um, but getting to the point, I'm 18 years old and started working out this summer, and things have been going well. That's great. I've gained some weight, can visibly see the change in my body. With that being said, when I still have my shirt on, I still look relatively skinny. Dude, that's great. You, you, you know, someday in the future, you're going to wish you were still wiry and skinny. Um, I say all that to say that women don't line up, line up to be with me. Dude, you're only 18. You're already going to talk yourself out of the game. There's this cute lady who looks around my age who works at a bank that I see every week. And we've had a few good conversations. I'd like to know your advice on how to ask her out without being awkward or embarrassing her in front of her coworkers. Thanks and much love from Arkansas. All right, you go in there with this ski mask. Freak her out like you're going to rob her. And then when she reads the note, you're just asking for her number. I mean, that's one of the easiest ones ever. Um, I would, uh, yeah, I'd slip her a note right under the thing. Who gives a fuck? You're making your deposit and everything. Oh, you just, oh, I got one more transaction or something like that. Whatever, you just fucking write it out. Either ask for her number or give her your number. Well, I don't know what. If you give, ask for her fucking number. I've been out of the game for a while, man. If you give her the number, then she has to write hers down. Do they pick it up on the security camera? Um, but I really think you got to write something down because you don't want to be trying to yell through that bulletproof glass. You know? Do you have a boyfriend? You know? <laughs> You don't want to sit out in the parking lot and wait for her to come out on her lunch break because that'll freak her out. I think you just, you know, let's see, what did you say? Cute lady, rum age, where you've even, even had a few good conversations. <laughs> I was just picturing you ask for a number and she says no. And just listening to you scream whore from the other side of that bulletproof glass. But it also is, it's Arkansas. Is there even any glass there because everybody's packing? Good, take your gun out. I'd like to see you try. Um, yeah. How to ask her out without it being awkward or embarrassing in front of her. Um, I will be honest with you. The awkwardness and the embarrassing is just all how you carry yourself. You know, who gives a shit? You like her. You're telling her you like her. You think she's attractive and you want to take her out. It's flattering. All right. Get up to bat and take a swing. But I think I would definitely, I think I would write something down. You know? How would you do that, man? That bulletproof glass is a real fucking barrier. I mean, you don't want to, like, turn your head sideways and try to yell through where you put the money. <laughs> you just want to do it, boyfriend. Oh, you do? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. All right. Can you put 50 on my checking account? I'm not going to make eye contact for the rest of this. No, I would, I would just write down on like a deposit slip. You know, or something like that. I don't know. I guess, I don't know. That's a tough one. That's a tough one for me. All right. I'm feeling like shit. I'm going to tap on it. I'm going to make excuses here. I, but I definitely think, I think I would write something down. I would just ask for a number. I'd write it on like a fucking deposit slip. No withdrawal you write it on the withdrawal you're making withdrawal <laughs> you're taking her out of the bank if it's a deposit 
It's only going to go one way. It's going to go on the other side of that glass and nothing's coming back. Okay, you, okay for the, you, you need the mojo here. You got to ask for her. You ask for her number on a withdrawal slip. There you go. Final answer. I phone a friend, but I don't have any. All right, that's it. I got to go fucking finish writing this goddamn, punching up this script. Um, if you're in California, try to stay dry today. Don't stand in front of a big dry dirt hill because you might get washed away with all the mud. All right, that is it. Um, go fuck yourselves and I'll check in on you on Thursday. Maybe I'll do some shows this week and I'll just hand out cigars like I had another baby or something. That's it. And that's not, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm fucking trying to give you a little hint here. All right, I'm not. There's no gossip. All right. Okay, I'll see you. 